Welcome back to Data Shark Academy. In previous lectures, we learned about how to start a Kafka producer and consumer. In ideal scenario, your cluster will have no problem and both producer and consumer processes will be up and running all the time. But this is not the case in real production environments, right? You will have some glitches and problems down the line. So in this lecture, I'm going to explain you step by step how to deal with such kind of issues and make your application completely fault tolerant in production. Let's talk about Kafka producer first. Say a producer process went down suddenly. In this case, the topic will stop getting new data and so will your consumers, right? There are a few things you can ensure to recover from this situation. First, you can start the producer program again and it will start reading the data from the source. All right. If your application doesn't care about any losses in the data, then this kind of resolution should be okay. And if your source was retaining the data while producer was down, then you shouldn't have any problem either because your producer will not miss the data and start reading it again and send it to the Kafka cluster. If your source is a push stream system, which is sending the data and then not retaining it. In this kind of cases, you will lose some data while producer was down. To tackle this kind of situation, you should always put some kind of a process in between the source and producer to temporarily retain the data. It could be another Kafka topic or some file system. Okay. All right. So that's about the producers. Now let's talk about consumer failures. This will happen more often than you can anticipate, but it's easier to fix on consumer side than on the producer side failures. What we need to do here is to launch multiple consumers in a group. As you can see in the diagram, we have two consumers in a group, consumer one and two. We talked about it briefly in earlier lessons also. What a group means is that there are multiple consumers which are running in the cluster and reading from the same topic. But internally, they are reading from different partitions of that topic. So if one of the consumer goes down, then other consumer, which is up, will start reading the data from other partition too. Okay, so let's see this in action. Let's bring the terminal up. Okay, so let's create a topic first. Okay, and we want to create Zookeeper. Okay, and replication factor we can put as one, and for partitions, let's put two. Okay, because we will start two consumers and each of them will be reading from one of the partitions. And then finally, we need to give the name to our topic. Let's call it DSA, Data Shark Academy. Okay. All right, so our topic is created. It's an empty topic right now. It has two partitions. We can do a describe to see the details about this topic. Let me copy this from here. Yeah. Oops, I did not give the name of the topic. But anyways, you you get the details about all the topics. What we are interested in is a DSA topic. All right. So here you can see we have two partitions, one replication. Okay. And here also you can see the first partition is partition zero. The other is partition one. All right. So far, so good. Now let's create a, a consumer group and launch two consumers on it. All right. So we will use console consumer. Bootstrap server.
and the topic will be DSA. Now here's something different that we did not cover earlier. It's consumer property and then the group ID. And we want to give the group ID a name called DSA group. Okay. And uh, we want to read from beginning. All right. So this is our first consumer that is running on the screen. There is no data coming from the producer. We have not started the producer yet. So let me rename this tab. And let's start another consumer session. Okay, and we need to run the same command there as well. All right, so now we have two consumers running. Let's rename this as well. Okay. And let's start another session for producer. And we'll use the same console producer. All right, so now our producer has started. And it's sending data to DSA topic. All right, let's rename this. All right, so now we have our producer, one consumer, and second consumer here. Okay, so let's type something in the producer and see if the data is going to the consumers. Okay, so let's type clear test. This is message two, message three, message four. And now let's see on the consumer side. So on consumer one has received only message two and four and consumer two received message clear text and message three. So both are receiving different set of messages. And this is because when the data is coming from the producer, it's going into different partitions of the topic. And each of the consumer is reading from one partition within that topic. All right. So let's type something more. Say test one, test two, test three, test four. Now let's see. So consumer one got test two and four, and uh, consumer two is getting test one and test three. So odd numbers are going to consumer two and even are going to consumer one, something like this. So now the data is partitioned that you understand. Let's see if one of the consumer goes down, what happens? So I'm killing consumer one by pressing control C. Okay. And I'm sending more data. Five. Oops. Six test 7, test 8. Now there's nothing on the consumer 1 tab because the consumer is down here. On consumer 2, we received all the messages, even messages as well. So 6 and 8 are also here. Okay. So now all the messages are going to the consumer 2. So you are not losing the data, right? Your consumer is still able to process the data. And that's because you have consumer groups. 
Now let's start the consumer one again and see what happens. Although I have mentioned from beginning here, which is the reading mode for this consumer, but you see it has not read the messages starting from the first message in the producer. And this is because when the messages are read by a consumer, Kafka commits that, right? And it will not give you the same messages again if you are running in a group, okay? If it was an individual consumer, then you would have got the same messages again. But when you are using a group property like this one, consumer property group ID, then this will not happen. So if I start sending messages again, say test 100, test 200, test 300, test 400. So let's see what happens on the consumer one and two side. So consumer one has started receiving the messages now. Okay, which is test 100, test 300, and the rest of the messages went to consumer 2. So automatically Kafka has identified there is a new consumer in the group. So it is distributing the messages now. All right. So this is how you can make your system, your Kafka application fault tolerant. Always try to have multiple consumers running in a group. In that way, if one of the consumer goes down, you will still get the messages. Although your other consumers will have some extra load to process, but you will not lose the data. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. So try this out on your end. This is very important topic. If you have any confusion, watch it again and try to understand thoroughly because it will be one of the common questions that will be asked in interviews as well. And moreover, in your real job, you will have to face these kind of situations. Okay. I see you in the next class.